Disclaimer. Now let me make something very clear. This video will trigger many of you, or very little of you. Just to let you know, this video is my opinion and I only aim to spread information about transgenderism and the horrors of it. Label me a uh, transphobe, homophobe, fascist, bigot, or whatever fancy terms leftists love to use. I am merely telling the truth that everyone is afraid to admit. I'm only trying to clear the fog of denial that many people live in. Without further ado, let's get into this. The big problem about transgenderism that no one wants to admit is that your delusions are not cured. And you are fed into. People take advantage of your delusions, gaslighting you into mutilating your privates, damaging your body by injecting hormones not designed for your body, and denying basic biology. I'm here to tell you why transgenderism is a money grab for these companies and a way for Satanists to tempt souls into damnation. Now, this video will explain two perspectives of this topic, my part, the secular, and the religious part. For now, here's a secular perspective. All of this can be debunked by one thing, basic biology. There are only two genders and there will always be two genders. There are only two types of chromosomes that people have in the 23rd pair, either XX or XY. That alone decides your gender, no matter how you feel, how much makeup you put on, or whatever surgery you get, or any hormones you take. A man is born a man, a woman is born a woman, and it will always stay that way. A man is born a man, and a woman is born a woman. Men cannot have periods, nor can they get pregnant. Now, for the rest of this video, I will be giving three examples of the consequences transgenderism can bring to people. The sin of vanity, the damage of bonds, and the damage of mental, physical health. Number one, Dylan Mulvaney. Known by many for his 365 days of girlhood. Despite coming from a very religious family, he was ghastly into becoming part of the community. The LGBT community. A great sinner of vanity, vainglory, and envy. Desperate for his success, he decided to document his days of delusion. I know many people call me out for calling out an icon of the transgender community. But this man's delusions are just one of many examples that limit womanhood into a game of dress up. Many biological women work hard for their success, but simply because a man thinks he's a woman, he is given success for his delusions. Many Olympic athletes have their success stolen because their opponent has a biological advantage. For example, yet William Thomas. But I feel Dylan himself doesn't want to be transgender. In his 365 ceremony, he states, maybe someday I'll be grateful for being trans. With this in mind, Dylan probably doesn't want to be transgender, but his vainglorious desires lead him to a desperate attempt for fame and success. In the same ceremony, you can see that his, the entire ceremony focuses on him being transgender for a year. 365 days of girlhood, yet biological women don't get a ribbon for their actual lives as actual women. This brings out the vanity inside of him. Truth be told, I am not sure if his transgenderism is a result of delusion or desperation. Regardless, coming from a religious family must truly damage his relationship with this family. Speaking of damaged bonds, this brings us up to our next victim of transgenderism. Chris Tyson. Everyone knows this man, the closest friend of Mr. Beast, who is an icon of charity. Recently, Chris came out as transgender. I don't have much info on this since it was so recent, but as you can see by Mr. Beast's body language in videos, he is in pain. It is obvious he doesn't support his friend's decision. No, not a friend. Best friend's decision. But he knows if he says anything, he will be tarnished online for his opinion. I know that he is suffering because the man he befriended long ago and grew up with is now gone. Not only this, but his wife is now leaving him for his decision. Which is possibly the reason for his divorce. And has also taken away the only father figure his son could have. Yet he claims he did this for his son, which I find sick that he uses his son as an excuse for his illusions. Another problem with this movement is that people push the idea of mutilation on the minds of impressionable kids. Such as our third and final victim. Number three, Jazz Jennings. 
Long before Dylan Mulvaney took the title as the icon of transgenderism, there was a transgender woman by the name of Jazz Jennings, who as a child was undergoing experimental transition surgeries, gender reassignment surgery, puberty blockers, and being pumped with estrogen. And to make this more sicker, this all began when Jazz was four years old. Since he was four years old, they've been doing this to him, and instead of his parents getting arrested for allowing their son to undergo experimental surgeries and taking experimental drugs, they get him a friggin' TV show. Saddest part is, Jazz is now living a literal hell. He has uncontrollable weight gain that he cannot lose and has terrible mental health over this. He is not the only one who was victim to this agenda. There are many detransitioners who regret their decision to mutilate themselves and pump themselves with hormones. And yet, no one calls it out because they silence them. This one guy tried saying or his experience of being a transgender woman and the side effects of it. However, the people who aren't wanting this to get out quickly told Twitter to delete the tweets, which they did, silencing this person. And I don't get it. Why? Why would you do this to yourself? That's, that's my big issue. Like, why? And an even bigger issue is acceptance. Like, why do we got to accept you if you couldn't accept yourself? But anyways, regardless, this is the end of the secular perspective. And I will now give this part over to my friend Jaku, who will explain what the Bible says about this and the Satanism behind transgenderism. Without further ado, here's my good buddy Jaku. Hey, Jaku here. That's not my real name, just want my privacy, so I'm using my Steam username. I just see, but I see you have finished listening to my friend. Now, I want to talk about the Christianity viewpoint on transgenderism. But before I start, I want to read one of my favorite Bible verses, Genesis 1.27, which reads, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, the effects on the body. These effects of transgenderism are really harming to the body from males transitioning to females, cutting off the literally healthy genitals God has created you to have, if you're willing to go that far. But that isn't something remotely good to do. And for females transitioning to males, obviously another removal of body parts that God has made good for you, for you to literally just have. And there's also puberty blockers and hormones, which doctors say it's okay to have and it's to let you have your time to decide whether you want to go along with the transition. That still ruins your body. <clears throat> but do you know what problems this can raise up aside from all the bodily effects? Well, first, sexual immorality. Ruining sex itself, which God made between only a man and a woman. Not man, man, woman, woman, man transitioned to woman and man and whatever the heck is going on. Second, God created these people, or you, if you're that p person, in his image and well with your confusion from Satan, who is trying to ruin God's good creation, which is you. With his help, you have distorted it and ruined yourself. Now, let's not forget about the mental effects. After someone transitions their gender, how do they even feel about it? Do they, only, do they just have a small grasp at temporary happiness that just fades away the moment they realize what they've done and, the, and it doesn't change how they feel about themselves? But after they change their mind, it's probably too late to go back. Maybe detransitioning de won't even help. Now, what does that do? That then can cause self-harm or also slip and slide, which I'm not going to use the actual word for, but I think you know where I'm going with this. And that ranges between 32 to 50 percent of transgender people. Now, after they transition, they may get gender-based victimization, discrimination, bullying, violent attacks from others, being rejected by their families, friends, and the community. They may also get harassed by their intimate partner, the police, and the public. 
even the accepting people, which you may be in. And that can take a toll on these kind of people. Now, there's also a problem with their agenda going on to kids. Now, as Matthew 19, 14 reads, and this is what Jesus says, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Now, personally, I've been hearing and have seen so many children's books. There's probably even toys out there, or games about sex and gender, and that hot, smelly, stinky garbage that are targeted to kids from as young as two, as far as I know, probably even younger. But if you are in support of this, you are very perverted for wanting to sit crap in front of people under the age of 18. Now, if you do not repent and put your trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm telling you this now as 1 Corinthians 6, 9 reads, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, idolaters, adulterers, nor men or women who practice homosexuality. But away from that, there's also the fact that whenever people bring out the truth, like I'm telling you right now, they are listed as transphobes. And I think I can apparently fit that title. Maybe even steal Matt Walsh's. No, I'm just kidding. Now, let me tell you why transgenderism is satanic, which is quite a shocking thing to hear about. There's a demon called a Baphomet who appears as a man with feminine breast and the head of a goat. Now, this statue, yes, it's a statue now, has been shown in a couple of places. As far as I can recall, New York, and maybe even the White House. That is not a good sign. And it can... It most like it literally just relates to transgenderism, and there are also the depictions of the statue with children, which is kind of shocking. Now, in conclusion, I'm not trying to be hateful. I'm only bringing out the truth that people must hear. Also, the Bible says not to judge them, for their judgment will be on Judgment Day. So I'm not judging them. God will. And also to pray for these kind of people, but not to associate with them. So fellow Christians who may be watching this, I encourage you to pray for these people so that they can come back to the light. Now, for any transgender people or anybody in the LGTV community, repent and put your trust in Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Amen. In conclusion, transgenderism is a money grab scheme by major corporations who feed off of the delusions of confused people. You can live in the fog of your own delusions if you want. That's fine. But I draw the line when this is pushed onto the innocent life, onto children who don't even know the difference between right and wrong. At this age, kids should not be brainwashed into believing this crap. Not only this is a scheme by corporations, but also by pedophiles who want this pushed onto children just to satisfy their lustful desires. If you don't believe me, look up minor attractive peoples. It's just the modern term for a pedophile. Just because the name is changed doesn't make it not a sin. The greatest trick the devil has pulled is convincing the world that he doesn't exist. There is no God, no devil, no devil, no hell. And want to know why no one calls out this bullshit? Because these people use pathos in their argument. They will call you out as a bigot, transphobe, homophobe, all because you won't bend to their will. The only will I will bend to is the will of God. If these people want to rebel against tradition, justice, reality, and logic, I will rebel against them. I will rebel against their unjustness, their corruption, their distorted desires. I won't have it. I draw the line when it comes to the innocent life. I draw the line when it comes to those who are vulnerable. Once again, this isn't directed to hate anyone of this ideology, though you are afraid to think it is. The Bible says to pray for those who are sinners of this ideology, but not to affiliate with them. With that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching this video if you haven't left in triggeredness. And for you to like, subscribe, and share this message to others to inform them as well. 
I also would like to ask that you go and subscribe to Jaku as well. He's a good friend of mine and might start making good content related to Ultra Kill or Jesus. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Stay triggered.